ataque. Hi, uh, my name's Ian. I'm a field engineer for Intercad. And I've also been working on the development of IC3D Steel. The reason why I was involved with this project in the first place is because of my background in um, oil and gas. Prior to working at Intercad, I spent seven years administrating for a drawing office who produced uh, bolted and welded steel structure drawings um, using SolidWorks. So I know both about the power of SolidWorks and also that there is a, a huge need for a tool out there to speed up the process. So you can see on the screen here a model that has actually been produced using um, IC3D steel. It looks like any other SOLIDWORKS model, but there's been a lot of automated processes involved with it. The joint creation is automated and the insertion process is uh, really simple. For example, uh, if I was to produce this using SOLIDWORKS, it would have taken me probably about a day. Using IC3D Steel, it took me about an hour. So I'm just going to give you an edited highlights tour of how I went about this process. So, so rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, IC3D Steel is complements the existing functionality within SOLIDWORKS and adds to it rather than trying to uh, start again. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a wireframe mesh, which I use the uh, grid functionality, which is already existing within SOLIDWORKS, and this is going to be used to drive the frame. So we're going to go about starting to add some members to it, and this is where I start using the IC steel functionality, and I'm going to now start inserting some columns. So I just pick on the lines and there's this preview image that comes up here which shows me where it's going to be positioned and the orientation. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to OK them. And now I see three steel starts adding those members. Four, let's add some more. So I'm going to add a, uh, a beam here. I want to reposition it. So I'm now going to just remove it here, add that. So for existing users of the SOLIDWORKS, you'll notice that we're working in the assembly environment. And this is one of the real big advantages of IC Steel, is it's, it allows us to leverage this environment to work with. Previously, we were stuck pretty much in the part environment, which had all sorts of limitations. OK, so I could carry on adding uh, the members to that structure, but I'm just going to uh, jump forward a bit. So this is the completed structure, and it's now ready for the details to be added. So we're going to use more IC store, uh, 3D steel tools. So as uh, Jason mentioned at the moment, we have a catalog to the AS standard, and this uh, so uh, it's pretty much complete, but we are still adding stuff to it. So there's all sorts in here, end caps, uh, voltage connections, welded connections, base plates, all sorts. So we're going to add in a, a simple welded connection to start off with. And it brings up a, a positioning tool where we add in the actual connection and it includes images for guiding the user as to how to position them. So we just need to select a couple of reference faces. And then once we do that, IC3 still gives us some options for customizing it. So whether or not we add, want to add this stiffener in, and if we do, do we want to change its thickness, the weld size associated, whether or not it's copes, and so forth. So I'm just going to select the default options and now IC3D Steel is going to go about positioning the stiffener, adding the cuts required to the model, like so. Okay, let's do that again, but we're going to use something a bit more complicated. We go for this continuous uh, connection here. So we have here a slightly more complicated situation. We've got a larger beam 
running through with these two smaller beams butted up against it. So this traditionally would have taken a fair bit of time in SOLIDWORKS to model, but with three reference faces, um, hello, sorry, I've just uh, had a question from someone. Is the sound quality okay for everyone? Better now. Okay, all right, I'll, um, maybe I just need to back off the mic a bit, possibly. Okay, sorry about that, let's carry on. Um, so, we're going to, once again, there's a series of options for customising it. We can chain, we can play around with the bolt sizes, the, the, the bolt pitching, the number of bolts, uh, plate thickness, all, all the things that are related to this connection, but we're just going to go with the default ones just to keep it simple. And now solid, uh, sorry, IC3D Steel is adding the cuts to all the, the members. It's also going to be cutting back these two members here and resizing the plates to suit. So you can see here that IC3 still has just done all the work for us and it's really shortcut the, the modeling process. So I'm going to um, jump forward again. Um, so we could have carried on adding all the different types of connections and as I said there's a library there to suit so we've got angle key cleat connections in this instance and once we completed this using the SOLIDWORKS functionality we could have produced uh, an overall bill of materials and an overall assembly but for steel fabrication what we really need is piece small drawings so this is where the the second part of the power of IC3 steel comes into play. So what we can do now is we can add, uh, create uh, piece small drawings and the way we do this is by dr driving it by a numbering scheme. So this numbering scheme can be set up either to a company standard as I think Jason mentioned before or um, it can follow the AS standard. There are various tools for customizing this. So I'm just going to give two examples. So a very simple one is where we allow IC3D Steel to group together all the identical items and then it's going to give them a uh, the same mark number. So we're just going to press this, go into this tool here, use the auto number and you can see here now IC3D Steel has grouped together all the identical items and it's going to give them a simple mark number of uh, mark number one, mark number two, so forth. As I said, you can customize that to your company needs. So we OK that. And now if I show all the mark numbers, it looks a bit busy, but if we zoom in and interrogate it, you can actually see what's going on. So there we go. These end caps here, they've got a mark number of five and there's four. Well, that makes sense. And I'll just do another one. There we go. Once again, mark number five, quantity four. So we've now applied mark numbers to all the other items here. And we can use this to generate piecemeal drawings. So there's a drawing generator tool. And it takes that mark number information. And we can drag and drop that into the, the, the tool. And now it's going to create a drawing for each unique item. And we can rename those drawings quickly, so we can call it, say, job 111 dash drawing 01. Drawing 02, and we can carry on doing that, so forth. Then if we OK that, SOLIDWORKS will generate the all the drawings that it needs, along with the bill of materials for all those uh, piece small drawings. And we're going to skip that, it takes a minute or two, but we will just uh, jump forward. I'll show you an example of what you'd get. 
So this is a piecemeal drawing of an angle cleat and it comes with a bit of materials. And this is where we start using the power of SolidWorks. This bit of materials is driven by the mod this model here, such that if we were to change the angle or change the length of it or the material, or this bit of materials would update automatically. It's, there is no manual input to the bomb. The bomb is all automated. Okay. I'm now going to show an example of uh, another type of marking uh, numbering scheme we could use. This is a composite uh, numbering scheme. So uh, for your, your company, it might be that you set up mark numbers where if all welded items are given the same mark number. So the columns have got an end cap and a base plate. So we might want to give them the same mark number rather than giving them unique ones. We can go use the uh, numbering tool again. I've done this already. And you can see here we've created up the same as before, mark numbers, but this time where they're welded together, we've grouped them together under the same mark number. I'll just use the same mark numbering scheme. <coughs> Excuse me. And if we show them, again, we've got now mark numbers for the overall item. So once again, we can use the drawing generator tool to create drawings, and this time it will create a drawing for the overall piece rather than for the individual items. And if I, we can rename them once again. Um, once again, I'm going to skip this because it just takes a minute and we don't want to bore you. So I can just take you to a leg drawing. So in this example here, you can see that We've got the, in this drawing, it's got the, the beam plus the base plate, all the associated holes and the end cap. And then the bill of materials, it reflects the three items. So it shows the column and the two base plates. And once again, if we were to change any of these values here, this bomb would update to suit. So I hope you can see that very quickly I've shown you the, the power in the, in the modeling environment where you can use the automated connection tools to speed up the detailing. And then there's various, there are the drawing tools to speed up the piecemeal fabrication drawings. Um, I hope you find this useful. Thank you very much.